Welcome. Today, you have clicked on a recorded webinar to talk about franchising, and we have Patrick here from Franchise Fastlane, um, but it does say koala behind him, and I was just asking him. He has, that's actually <laughs> a green screen behind him or an image, but you don't get the halo around you, so he's figured out this wonderful way to do the image. It might be your computer, too. Uh, <laughs> but he represents Koala Insulation, which is a very exciting brand um because of all the business attributes and criteria with it although i don't think too many people wake up and say i want to do insulation <laughs> you're definitely correct yeah, not me. <laughs> i mean how many people really wake up and say i want to do franchising this is true yeah, yeah not not many unless uh, you know you come from a family who's owned either businesses um from you know entrepreneur from the ground up or people who have family members that have owned some of the big names over the years the mcdonald's the wendy's what have you then they, yeah. can, they already know the industry. I know definitely for myself, it looks like I'm a couple of days out of high school, but I've been in you franchising. Do. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've been in franchising, as you know, about 10 years now. And it, it took somebody else nudging me to that direction for it to even be on my radar in the first place. Yeah, I, I, I think that that's the case right now. You should franchise whatever cream you're using. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. that's, that is my secret forever. We Sorry. swear he's yeah. not 19, everyone. <laughs> 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 All right, so let's see here. On our agenda, we're going to talk about who we are a little bit. We're going to have some fun, some of our backgrounds, why, why we're in franchising, our roles to help you either take a look at franchise brands, um, understand if maybe franchising isn't right for you, understand the Koala business overview. If you like what you're hearing in this webinar, uh, there's a link at the end to connect with me so that I can introduce you to Patrick and the team. What franchisors are looking for? Should I work with a consultant? Is franchising right for you? How to get awarded? That's usually an interesting one most of us or anyone hasn't thought of. And a, a typical timeline. So that way, um, if, you're, if you're listening to this today, maybe this is something to think about in six months, a year, or maybe last week. So my name is Talanda. I have been a franchise business consultant coach, gosh, for about six years, five, six years now. Um, I am with the franchise consulting company. You can see from my green screen, which isn't as nice as Patrick's. Uh, my, my heading is the, the franchise educator. Uh, before this, I was at Rhino7, which is a franchise development firm. And before all of this, uh, I was a co-owner with my former spouse of two franchise service brands, business to consumer service brands. So the industry of you know, business to consumer service that we're talking about today for Qual Insulation, it's always interesting to see because um, you know, some people might like painting, but then not insulation when really there's a lot of similar business criteria that goes into whether it's a service brand or a brick and mortar. And those are some of the things we help clients understand that sometimes it's not about the widget or the service. It's about really understanding the back end workings and, of course, you know, the quality of the corporate team, too. Uh, owner of Sideri Studio Photography, I put that in there because it keeps my creative side going. Uh, before all of this, I was in the marketing team at Corporate Sherwin-Williams up in Cleveland, Ohio. So if you want to connect with me, I put my LinkedIn uh, link on here. There will be this uh, PowerPoint on the website. The fun fact, I left it blank on this, but if you're listening to more than one of these recordings, then you will probably already be able to answer this. But my fun fact is that my dad was a manager of a McDonald's location here, I think it was in Dayton, Ohio. And uh, he was a recent college graduate and he couldn't get a job or whatever. And he was managing a McDonald's and uh, they asked him, I think it was corporate, asked him if he wanted to own it. And he said, no. I'm a college graduate. <laughs> oh, there can be mistakes made. And sometimes I use that story to understand um, there are emerging brands. There are ones that will take off. And what are those differences to understand and to look at? Um, just because it wasn't the traditional hamburger, it was something more of a quick serve doesn't mean it's not something to take seriously. Mm -hmm. So Patrick, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yes, of course. So for me, franchising, I, I started off in it rather young and, and a lot like uh, the story of your father there. Franchising for me was the diamond in the rough. So I grew up in a very blue collar family, very hardworking family. I, I'm definitely happy and grateful that I, I was given those traits by my father. But I did about every kind of labor you could imagine. So I was pouring concrete, stamping it. I've been framing. I've done plenty of roofing, plenty of drywall and just pretty much all the stuff that nobody ever wants to do for themselves. 
And so I walked into a nutrition concepts uh, when I was about, I want to say 14 and started off there part-time because fitness was always a big piece of my life and just worked my way up. I uh, became a general manager, regional manager, ended up moving out to Northern California and was responsible for uh, several locations across about 12 states for oh, my wow. franchisee. Yeah. And so I, I was traveling quite a bit. I really enjoyed it, but I, I identified that I didn't have any relationships. I didn't have a girlfriend, didn't have any pets. I couldn't lock down anywhere. So I ended up purchasing my own franchise uh, in Northern California in a brick and mortar space that was also supplementation and ran that for several years. Um, since exiting, uh, I've done several things. I was a wildland firefighter, kind of going back to my roots of wanting to work with my hands. I was a sawyer, so I cut down on the flaming trees. And I also did business consulting for private gym owners on the side. And so I was approached trees on fire. You would cut them down. <laughs> yeah, actual trees on fire. So I would go in there. Get out of there. <laughs> yeah, it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I'll, I'll be honest, but I really enjoyed it. Um, I was gone in Colorado for about seven weeks, though, and I got back home. And my fiance and I had a talk, and probably decided it wasn't the best thing to keep doing for any future <laughs> pursuits. But um, did that for quite a bit of time, and then I was approached by Franchise Fastlane which is a FSO, a franchise sales organization. And we partner with the top tier franchise models after taking them through a very extensive vetting process and help handle their acquisition. Or what I would say, an easier way of explaining it, I'm the uh, first line of defense for the franchisor. So just helping making sure that candidates like yourself that are interested in the concept, that you meet the culture, the experience, as well as the drive or grit associated with being able to be successful within this particular model. I chose Koala for several reasons, but one that is most near and dear to my heart is integrity. They legitimately care about the success of their franchisees and something that we'll discuss today is the support they've put into place to really just put their money where their mouth is. But definitely feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn and then uh, for my hobbies here. So I, I love to sing. I grew up, my mother was a part-time nurse and she used to actually have me sing Frank Sinatra uh, to all of the oh, no, attendees there at the home. So I, I loved it. And um, I also still do quite a bit of remodeling. So anytime someone needs a, a gazebo built or any concrete poured, I'm, I'm definitely there with tools in hand. I need concrete poured. I need it on my front steps. You want to come out to Ohio? Well, I've, I've always wanted to go out to Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about what I do here a little bit to help clients and then we'll jump into Koala. But our role is very similar to an executive recruiter or a realtor for business. So we are paid by the franchisors. It is free service to you as the client. And our fees do not change. Even if you went directly to the franchisor, you're paying the same amount for the franchise system. So with our background and experience, having owned franchise systems, having been in the industry for a little over 12 years now, uh, we're here to help consult, guide, educate, um, help with timelines, ask some of those tough questions, you know, really try to understand what it is you're looking to do and then be your coach. Uh, we provide research, information, resources to you. So my role, again, it's that matching process. We go through, we determine if business ownership in franchising is a viable option, thoroughly analyze your unique goals, your skill sets, and provide that curated list of potential options that is a good match for you. Um, it's also for the ones that are available in your area. Advise and consult on all aspects of that due diligence, that investigation process. And then we also provide financial and legal references and recommendations. So Koala is the franchisor. Their role is the actual investigation. And I do say this a few times, probably ad nauseum here, but they conduct the investigation process so that you as the client can learn all aspects of that business model. Uh, they provide the financial information. I do not, the, the franchisor does for any of the franchisor brands that you speak with. And they will assist with validation calls with current franchisees. Uh, I say that because you'll do the validation calls at the end of the investigation that way um, after you have learned everything there is to learn about the business model, you can ask much more intelligent questions to franchisees, more third tier, second tier, third tier types of questions, get better results from those calls and better use of your time. So there's no sense in doing those calls at the beginning and asking, you know, basic level marketing questions when Patrick hasn't even gone through those calls yet. Uh, is there, any, I love, I leave this last one blank. If there's anything that you do in the investigation or Koala does in addition to this. No, you really hit the nail on the head. I mean, in addition to being the gatekeeper, essentially, 
my main responsibility is to make sure that we educate on all your candidates, like you said, on all the facets as far as the brand's concerned. And to your point, really make sure that they can ask very educated questions to help right. identify if the brand's a good fit for them. Right. All right. So some common questions that I cover during the consultation with clients is, you know, some of the pros and cons in franchising. Uh, you don't have to 100% like franchising or dislike it, not to start looking at some options. Sometimes people look at options as, um, you know, one of four different routes they're considering doing. Someone looked at franchising maybe a year ago, and now, the, now they know this is what they want. Uh, my particular situation, the reason I got involved in it is my husband at the time, back in 2009, was laid off. Um, and I've had this conversation with a few clients uh, you know, one of the highest paid employees at a company and guess who goes first. And we got in franchising because people we knew in Western New York owned multiple Stanley steamers. They owned a couple sky zones, which then opens the door for conversation on owning different brands in different industries and covering different seasonalities. But, you know, there's always the first one to start with. Um, is franchise ownership for you? Sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it's timing. Uh, how we conduct that match, I do explain to people what we're looking for, how I conduct that match and come up with the curated list that I do get. What should I be focusing on for business ownership? So these are questions that I ask clients because it's not about how much can I make? How much can I make? If you're almost only focusing on the, the monetary aspect, then maybe business ownership or franchising isn't for you. Certainly you want to make money, but you know, you, you should enjoy the ownership part. You should enjoy the management skills. You should enjoy the process. What are your goals? Uh, I ask clients to come up with a list of goals because that does help understand some timelines. It helps understand, should you be looking at one territory, 10 territories, eight territories? Because then what's that end result going to be? What do franchisors look for in franchisees? That is an important key aspect. This is not a, well, if I decide to talk to them and I have the money, I'm automatically going to get a franchise. Some franchisors have had to turn down and stop investigations with clients. And when to look at funding. I do bring this up because funding is an important aspect. Money's always a funny subject because it's so personal. Um, and uh, the, the best way to parallel explain it is when you're looking for a home, you wanna get pre-qualified from the bank to understand what range of home would make most sense for you to look at, or you know how much you're, you are comfortable with. Just because you're pre-qualified for a certain amount doesn't mean you're comfortable mm -hmm. spending that. So really understanding the numbers for yourself personally and getting that funding piece done before you start speaking with Patrick. So this is always a fun one to cover, and we can kind of be tongue in cheek about this a little bit, but popular questions and hangups, without a doubt, every client, and I say this so that you don't feel alone or that you're the only one thinking this. This is very, very common. I know I thought this 12 years ago when, when I was in the client's shoes, but this wouldn't work in my market. There's way too much competition. But what if an employee leaves? What am I gonna do then? What if a manager leaves? I don't wanna be doing you know, painting or insulation. I've never done, and then you can insert the industry here. I've never done flooring. I've never owned a pet. I've never, you know, I'm not a big fitness buff. Um, so that's a big hang up thing too. What if I want out of the business? So an excellent plan, an excellent strategy is definitely something to go through. I'm not ready to speak with the franchisor, Talanda, but can you tell me what they do for their marketing? <laughs> can you tell me how they handle this? But what am I going to make? How much am I going to have to spend? What, there's all these kind of questions that people want to ask me instead of speaking to Patrick or Koala. And really the only place to get the entire business model is if you speak to the franchisor. Um, I like to say, and I've said this throughout other little recorded webinars here, but it's casually dating. No one's making a business decision. No one's getting married. You can respectfully say to Koala, hey, listen, this isn't for me. Or they can say that to you as well. We don't think you're a good fit. So it's just casually dating. And I think it takes some of the pressure off. If you think you're speaking to someone because you're going to get married, then it, everyone feels pressured. And there's no need for that. It's just very casual. And you're just learning and evaluating. And then, of course, I've mentioned this a couple of times, but how much can I make? So I did a blog on item 19, which is part of the franchise disclosure document. And item 19 will, whether you're looking at a McDonald's or Koala, item 19 will always outline the performance of the franchisees. Um, the franchisor is the only one that can talk to you about what's in that FDD. 
Um, they can't talk to you about what's outside of that FDD because that's an earnings claim then. But again, back to that validation with current franchisees, they can talk to you about what they're making. Now that's a personal call up to them if they want to, but they can speak to it. So that's just some of the educational factors that I do talk through with clients. So some rules and guidelines. Um, a lot of this is repetitive over what I just said, but only the franchisor can provide the detail of the business model and financials. Investigating a franchise is not making a business decision, it's learning and evaluating. If you can follow the process of the investigation, you are more likely to be awarded a franchise. So I use the term awarded, that is, that is key. And if you think about it this way, a franchise system is a set of processes and procedures and they're proven. So if someone can follow the process and procedure of an investigation, it's usually a good indicator of how you will behave as a franchisee. And so those are some you know, good markers that franchisors look for. Both sides are interviewing each other and both sides can choose to respectfully end the investigation if it's not a good fit. And my role is to help you get the coaching and the guidance and to get awarded. So a quick timeline here, this isn't set in stone. This is just a general idea. Sometimes it moves faster, sometimes it moves slower, but a general rule of thumb here, I'm touching the mouse and my Apple mouse, I think I put new batteries in it and it's super sensitive. So it might change the slide here. So we have the initial call with the client, walk through some of those basic questions, talk about franchising. From there, we have a consultation call, which is where we build your business model from. And that's usually about two weeks, maybe after we have uh, the initial call, I build the business model. So now we're maybe at about three weeks out and then provide you the curated list of franchisors that match up with you. Uh, and then from there, you can choose the top ones that are most interesting uh, to begin speaking with. That's about three, four, or four and a half weeks, kind of depending on life or how fast you want to move through the process. And then those investigations with the franchisors, those, goodness, I don't know about you, Patrick, but the fastest I have ever seen is three weeks. Uh, that's highly unusual. That's usually someone who understands franchising very well. It's mm -hmm. not new to them. Uh, but typically, I would say an average is about 12 weeks. Sometimes mm -hmm. it does take longer, but that's about an average. So once you have the full investigation, you can be invited to a meet the team day. And then after that, they will offer you a franchise if they do still feel you're a good fit. And then you can accept or decline that offer. So now, Koala Insulation. Patrick, tell us about this brand and what's exciting about it. Yes, of course. So we're, we're definitely very excited to be on the call with you today and be one of those brands that you represent and choose to spotlight. So thank you so much for that. Okay. And uh, for everybody that's watching the video, you know, before I, I hop in my soap or stoke box and start <laughs> talking about Koala, I do really want to reinforce to everyone how important it is to have a strong franchise consultant like Talanda. Uh, I myself going through the franchise process, trying to do it by myself. It's already kind of like drinking from a fire hose, but when you're doing it solo and you don't have a sounding board or somebody to match up brands with your background or with your passions, it's like drinking from all the fire hoses at the same time. So Talanda <laughs> is a can very- be overwhelming. Yeah, it definitely can, which is also, as an example, why it's so important to questions that Talanda just showed. I mean, you should feel comfortable asking those questions and knowing what the solution looks like in each one of those situations. Okay. But pivoting to Koala, we are the leading franchisor in the residential and new construction installation of insulation. So say that five times fast on your own. If you're looking, one. yeah, <laughs> if you're looking for a business that's a, not a fad, a specialist led organization, has low startup expenses, strong margins, and possesses a very cooperative culture versus that of competition focused on franchisee success, I definitely suggest that you reach out to Talanda and set up a call with myself. Uh, there are three individuals on the brand. So you have myself and Derek Bishop. We are both the directors. So we're the main individuals that will be taking you through the discovery process. And then we also have Bobby Brennan. He's our VP of development. He really helps you isolate what the signing process looks like. So after you've been approved for a territory, we have lining fund or funding lined up. That's when we then begin scheduling onboarding. So the three of us work together to really give you a smooth process of discovery day and uh, identifying if this is a good fit for you. But Talanda, you mind going to the next slide? Not at all. So to give you a little bit of an idea of where we're located to date, we are still in our emerging phase as a growing franchisor. So we launched in 2018 and we kicked off our franchising efforts in 2020. And we are now in 29 states with 200 territories awarded. Uh, 
So as you can see by this map, we're rapidly approaching becoming a household name and insulation. Uh, we can work within any market since insulation is both a necessity and a luxury and every single home has to have it. And if you reside in one of these states, there's a pretty good chance that you've probably already seen one of our giant rigs with our mascot Outback OB displayed on the side. But Koala definitely prides itself on having the best franchise support teams that are out there, which is why in addition to us scaling our territories, we've also scaled our corporate team all on Koala's payroll from eight individuals in 2018 to now 27 members, all dedicated to supporting you. And we keep as many services in-house at no cost to you, like marketing, we have a call center, we have a contractor sales team, and also equipment build outs, just really helping cut out the middleman making sure that we intimately know what your territory looks like and your target demographics to help secure a successful ramp up and scale up for your business. Uh, you mind going to the next one? So to talk about our space and give you a, a better understanding of where we operate, the insulation market itself, it's a booming industry. It's estimated at $50 billion and it is currently severely fragmented. Uh, just like Talanda said, I imagine you've never woken up and said, oh, I'd really like to own an insulation business, but you've probably never actually been targeted for insulation services either. And that's because our current competition being mom and pops, they usually only offer insulation services as additional or tertiary offerings within their primary service, or they don't have the resources to really mass market or handle that large lead flow. So as mentioned earlier, our business model focuses on two categories of earnings. We work with residential homes where we're replacing or upgrading installation in an attic, a basement, a garage, or a crawl space. And then we also tailor to home builders and commercial construction uh, to help establish those relationships in spirit of we know that not everybody has experience in this space. Koala HQ will actually call all the developers, home contractors, HVAC companies on your behalf to help secure you a place on their bidders and vendors list. A couple of big important facts, we're a mobile business, so no rental space, small, easy to manage teams, and then you're also able to run this model as both an owner operator or as a semi-absentee, which is something we can get into more detail whenever we meet for an introductory call. Um, do you have um, any sort of stats on how many people are taking the owner operator and how many are taking the semi-absentee route right now? So I'd say probably about 40% of our new franchise partners are semi-absentee. So we oh, do wow. have several, yeah, several individuals that have kept their full-time job, whether operating the business as a couple or as a single individual. Okay. You'll definitely want to anticipate being able to delegate at least 20 hours a week within the first three months in order to launch the business. But afterwards, it can be scaled back to eight to 10 hours a week. Yeah. I usually kind of equate having a new business like this as having a newborn. Mm -hmm. Even if you're going to run it semi-absentee, still expect those first three months, maybe six months, if you have a colicky, a colicky business. <laughs> That's right. uh, you know, just it is going to kind of be roll up your sleeves for those first few months. Even though it's a franchise, it's still launching a business. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. And that's why with no matter what you want to plan on that situation of at least a minimum of 20 hours a week, to your point, within those first few months. Right. So moving on to what's created Koala Insulation, and this actually kind of branches into our ability to operate as either a semi-absentee or an owner operator. I've mentioned the support that Koala's team offers, and it all starts here with Scott Marr. Uh, Scott is a lot more intelligent than I am. He started his first he successful- He looks just as young. <laughs> I know. We're both like, just out of high school. <laughs> what are you drinking? <laughs> so he, uh, he started his first franchise company at the age of 15. Um, he actually tells this story to where he wasn't even old enough to have his driver's license. And so a friend of his had to drive him to all of these locations as they ran the oh business gosh. up. But it was called uh, Fleet Clean USA. It was mobile fleet washing. You know, the name's somewhat self-explanatory. They're going out cleaning fleets of vehicles, your personal vehicle. But they successfully scaled the model as a franchise to 400 cities and got back-to-back wow. -back mentions on your entrepreneur top 100 list for new franchises. So it's very important to understand that although we are emerging, Scott and his team, they've done this song and dance before. So when I say they operate with integrity, they legitimately know what it takes in order for you to be successful. And I think that's really why we're seeing such a quick national development across all these states. But he truly is a founder that is in the field. You won't see him leading from a podium. 
if you visit HQ randomly, he's going to be underneath the truck. He's going to have grease all over his hands and he's doing installs on the vehicle. So definitely someone that intimately is involved in your success. And after months of dissecting the best area of growth for others within the industry, that's ultimately where he created Qual Insulation. Very nice. so don't mind going through the next two here. So unpackering our, our service offering just a little bit more, there's a pretty singular reason or approach for our existence. And that's of course the need for insulation. So we see this in the form of commercial relationships or for homes that were built in a timeline where there were no construction codes or the insulation mm -hmm. settled or maybe some new construction happened and the contractor quite simply just didn't install insulation. So we're lacking it. Um, many homes, they're literally bleeding dollars with high utility bills. We see that about 25% of your AC or your heating and cooling is being lost through the attic. And that's actually regardless of when the home's built. So we've serviced plenty of brand new day one builds and gone in and upgraded the insulation. But there's also strong health values, which is something we advertise strongly. We actually have a report that the Harvard School of Health did. They did a controlled study showing that proper insulation drastically decreased the number of sick days within the general population oh, really? due, due to making sure there wasn't any rodent entry. We weren't circulating all that nasty stuff throughout the homes there. And then also making sure that we we're sealing up any access points or mold remediation, things like that. But really wrapping it up to simplify it, what the hook is that homeowners reach out to us for is the fact that we generate and we sell savings. Energy efficiency is always a decision maker within the sales process, whether it's a fuel efficient vehicle or in our situation, how high are our utility bills? And so we're able to report in our advertising that 90% of homes are under insulated and that by using quality insulation, we can potentially reduce your bills by 50%. So in short, we sell savings, good health and home value. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at our services, uh, we are a one-stop shop for all things insulation. So we've established national and local vendor pricing, which that's immediately allowing you to compete with all the other individuals within your territory. So as we continue to grow, we're able to continue to leverage that pricing. So to help decrease your costs further, we're also in the middle of establishing our own creator and distributor of spray foam insulation. So spray foam, you spray it on, it expands about two to three inches, and there's several forms of spray foam. We also have bat insulation, which is that stereotypical cotton candy that you see in the walls with the paper backing. We have blown in insulation, which is extra fluff, kind of like bat insulation, but it's usually used to reinforce or renew insulation within the home. We also have air sealing. So we're sealing off can lights, junction boxes, things like that to make sure that we're sealing up minuscule holes through your home. We also do um, attic ladder, ladder, ladders. We have solar vent fans. There's so many offerings underneath the qual insulation umbrella. Who knew there are so many? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's why I say one-stop shop. And especially compared to your, your competition, you know, usually it's someone that's doing drywall. And since they're in the wall, then they'll do insulation as well. And so because of our marketing tax, the launch program that we have and all the different service offerings we, we possess, we're really able to make sure that we influence an entire market. Wow, okay. So the support, this is yeah. cool looking at a franchise brand. That's right. So really, in my opinion, this is my favorite thing. I get the most excited talking about the support. So I, I feel like we've kind of saved the best for last year. So with franchisee training, um, ongoing support, it's all really offered in a plug and play system. And that's really easily seen here within our marketing. So the way that we go about this is we are not a cold call, door knocking acquisition business. So with our marketing, you're going to be handling inbound leads and sales calls from advertisements that are ran in your territory with partnership from Koala HQ. So this slide here is showing more of our ground game advertising. So the way that our partnership is outlined is we have a team of individuals in the home office that are making brand new content each season. So when we speak to ground game, I mean like radio advertisements, billboard advertisements, we're also looking at mailer campaigns, magazines, radios, infomercials, and we're able to customize those ads to the demographics within your territory. So for yourself, it's just a matter of choosing the advertisement that you wish to run. And then we help you establish the partner, such as the local post office, to mail out those campaigns and target each zip code that you're interested in. On the next slide here, we show some examples of your online support. So Koala will be creating a toll-free vanity number for your territory to where anybody that is interested in insulation to reach out to that number first. It automatically gets sent over to your salesperson. And if they're unable to answer their cell phone they have on their hip because they're doing another estimate, 
it gets kicked over to our call center. You'll also have a landing page and a website that is exclusive to your territory. And then we also have all the marketing mediums created as far as targeted advertisements and search engine optimization. So really simply put, we really dominate marketing to make sure that everybody sees Koala Insulation and begins to recognize it as a household name. And on the next page here, we really kind of hit that concept home. So a part of our marketing tact is also securing reviews from homeowners that have been serviced by Koala Insulation. And our customer reviews absolutely rave about the services being completed as well as our sales process. So as you can see here, I just wanted to share some real life examples taken off of Google, showing how everybody felt about working with Koala Insulation franchisees. And for all of you watching the video, I really encourage you to do the same thing. You're going to be extremely hard pressed to find anything less than five stars, which is a raving review of us following that white glove mentality, leaving the location cleaner than it was when we arrived and really completing the service quickly and efficiently. But going back to the main support pieces, I spoke to the call center. You can go ahead and skip this one too. Uh, we do have that in-house call center. So as I said, it allows us to make sure that a call that a GM couldn't take to be converted to a lead if you're unable to service them. And also with that website, homeowners are able to schedule time directly onto your calendar. So if you're dealing with a millennial like me that for some reason doesn't like picking up the phone and just calling, they're going to be able to schedule that time directly so that way you're aware of them wanting to have a service completed. Uh, continuing to go through the support, here's a really, really big one. Uh, one of Talanda's questions that she mentioned uh, on the initial slide was, what about my staffing? How do I secure them? So if you go to this next slide here, the average crew is going to have an operations manager or a sales manager, which is typically the same person. And your team is going to consist of two laborers. So we're essentially looking at a team of three. Um, Koala HQ is going to be putting the job postings out on Indeed, listing all of the job responsibilities, vetting those candidates out and identifying which we feel would be the best pick within your territory. And then we provide you with those picks. And you can either be as hands-on or as hands-off as you like throughout that process. So we mitigate the learning curve that is needed for you to identify what kind of candidate would be best in your location. Another thing that's really nice about insulation, if you're doing more of a specialty service, like call it um, if we're painting a home, you usually have to have experience specifically in that trade. With insulation, it's a fairly low skill trade, so we can pull from all of the labor pools, which is why we also don't charge for training. So going to the next slide here, as far as your operations are concerned, with all the ongoing components of the business, we already have checklists, timelines, everything from maintaining the efficiency of the vehicles to your initial consults and daily, weekly, and monthly responsibilities of you as the franchise owner, all created and templated. And then as I mentioned, with us not charging for training throughout the entire course of your relationship with us, you're able to consistently hire new crew members, scale your business, and have the guarantee that they're gonna maintain brand continuity and expectations from our Qual HQ team. This is a lot. Yeah, a lot of support. I mean, when people say to me, "Oh, but the fran or the um, the royalties," I don't want to pay the royalties. But I don't like franchising because of that. Where the when you own a business, either you're going to pay, you know, six different vendors, or you can mm -hmm. pay a, a fran or a royalty percentage. I mean, you pay to the left or pay to the right is really what it's going to come down to, and this takes a huge hassle mm -hmm. off franchisees' plates. Well, and each one of these pieces of support, and we're just we're just touching on maybe four or five of them today. Right. Whatever, when we have an intro call, I mean, you will just be blown away with everything that Qual HQ does. But all these individuals are legitimately on Koala's payroll. So where some concepts may say that they have a marketing team, you do find out it's oftentimes outsourced. So instead of being numero uno, as far as the focus is concerned, you're in a list of 10, 11 other businesses. So we really make sure that mm -hmm. we do get our hands on your success in your market. Wow, that's really important. Mm -hmm. So for the next slide here, uh, we do have an equipment package. So this is a photo that's in front of one of the front yards of a home that we're servicing with our local franchisees. So our standard equipment, it is one pickup truck that is sourced through very strong pricing with Ford. We have our own fleet pricing code as well as uh, two trailers. Each trailer has a different technology in it. That's definitely something that we can get into the micro detail on a later call. But within the equipment, the reason why we have you start with one truck, two trailers, is you're able to controllably scale your business instead of having to put this huge overhead out, hire two more employees, double your marketing spend, 
we really give you the ability to have a low overhead investment and ramp the business up quickly so that way you're able to justify and visually see the cash flow before making any additional investments. But all of these trailers, they're also handled in-house. So we're going to secure them stock, reinforce them, do additional build outs, do all the wraps, install the wiring harnesses and install all the technology and make sure that it all works. So again, somebody that hasn't been in the insulation space before, you're able to follow a very well color coordinated printed out example handbook and all the equipment that follows an order of operation system. So if you have a technician in the field, they don't know it's broken, they're able to follow that system, call Koala HQ, we can overnight that part over to you, or we have partners that can work with you in the field to install that equipment. But just like with our distributors ventilation, we of course also have relationships with all the vendors for the wraps. So if you need to have it done locally in territory, we're able to do so without someone charging you an arm and a leg. But on the next slide here, I do wanna highlight our initial investment and at least speak a little bit to our model today. Um, do you mind skipping here? This is just an example of some of the vendors that we work with. But looking at our numbers, I wanna explain our item seven first. So this is everything that you should anticipate to have to spend in order to open the business as well as your first three months of operating capital. So you see that Koala has a, a comfortable or a moderate investment level at an average of about $150,000 for all of your startup. The reason why you don't see a large warehouse space tacked into this is because we've established relationships with the distributors, so they are dropping off the job supplies at the job site. So you don't have to have this five, 6,000 square foot location for on-hand inventory. We do have an item 19 or financial earnings that are disclosed in our FDD. Um, but today we're not gonna be talking through that just because of the presentation today. Usually we update those numbers on an annual basis. So we wanna make sure that I can handle that conversation with you one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, yes. And, and you had told me earlier when we were talking before we started this that you guys do a full pro forma walkthrough. Um, item 19, just to refresh, is the, the page where uh, it shows uh, performance of franchisees on uh, revenues and what you can make. So they do do a, a full pro forma walkthrough with you during the investigation, which not every franchisor does. Yeah, and we, we have plenty of data there disclosed so that way you can really go about speaking with current franchisees and identifying what you are comfortable with on terms of earning potential. Um, but yes, definitely something that if you've been impressed so far with all the pieces of the business, you'll definitely want to schedule a call to learn more about the earnings. Yeah, uh, the earnings are <laughs> impressive. You're definitely want to want to hear what they are. Um, I'm going to ask if I was someone listening to this, this is just something I, I saw quickly, but under training expenses, you have low 500, high 3000. Yet before a few slides back, you had noted that there is no cost for training. Can you explain that just a little bit further? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy you brought it up. So uh, just as I mentioned, we're going to help source the employees through Indeed. And then we also don't charge for the training itself. So this line item is for travel expenses. So this will handle hotel, airfare, and meals while yourself and your employees are traveling out to that initial training. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. And for the last little section here, I do want to walk through our ideal fit. Um, as far as Koala is concerned, as I'm sure you've gathered, none of our franchisees have previous experience in either the home building space or in the insulation space. And so I'd love to walk through what the average individual's background yeah. usually is. Um, but honestly, what we generally look for is management experience, general sales knowledge. We definitely need somebody that is a little bit of a sense of competitiveness because you want to be successful. You want to have a successful business. We do look for strong leadership skills that are focused on developing teams with high customer service aptitude. That is where we really blow our service out of the water. Insulation operates in an area where traditionally people are showing up late, sagging their pants, a little bit scary. Maybe they're not even showing up at all. And so we really want to destroy um, that assumption of lack of professionalism. So we show up on time, we give notifications of being there early, we maintain brand continuity and uniforms, very professional. So we definitely want that customer service aptitude without a doubt. And as mentioned earlier, we do appeal to both semi-absentee and owner-operator management styles. And you will have the opportunity to speak with franchisees that have both uh, kinds of experience. And then lastly here, I do wanna just outline um, a little bit of our discovery process. And so it should be the final slide that we have today. Um, similar to, to Landa's, uh, we have our introductory conversation. 
And then as mentioned earlier, we walk through unit economics immediately afterwards. And so that's where we're identifying the initial investment in greater detail. I will comb through each one of the line items with you, all of the expenses, help you build out a pro forma, and also give you a solid base to build upon for a multi-year pro forma, especially if you're going about funding options with Talanda. After that, we'll invite you to start speaking with current franchisees. And then we also host what's called a leadership call, where you have the opportunity to speak with all of the founding members of Koala and the department heads on a consistent basis each week. So it's a really good place to voice any higher level questions as far as operations or breaking into markets and to really, again, feel comfortable with the support that you're going to be getting from Koala. I'll also walk you through each one of the items in the franchise disclosure document. And then from there, if we both identify that we feel Koala is a good fit and a good opportunity, we'll come out to our discovery day, or as I would say, more of a confirmation day where you attend to confirm your feelings upon the brand. Afterwards, if you're awarded for the territory, we schedule a time to sign the franchise agreement, wire the fees, and then begin your onboarding. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have left over for me here. I don't think I have too many. Um, if this is a brand that you have found interesting, I would encourage you, this is the link to book a casual call with me, the franchiseeducator.com book online. Um, if you aren't ready to talk to me or, or, or talk to Patrick for that matter, um, and you just want to understand some of the financing first, here are uh, two links to do two different companies that we professionally work with that we recommend, uh, Guidant Financial and Benetrends, both, one's on the West Coast, one's on the East Coast, uh, but both are very uh, well-reputable companies that can help you understand the financial aspects, what you could be pre-qualified for, cost of capital analysis, to take a look at the business ownership. Um, they would reach out to you after that and have a, a more detailed conversation with you, but that can be helpful to understand um, if this is an option for you. I do believe on the other slide, you had a net worth requirement mm -hmm. and, and you're, you're very strict on it, 250,000 uh, net worth. And, and franchisors have that because they don't want to see anyone get in over their heads. They don't want to see anyone pushing too much to try to make it work. Um, because obviously being undercapitalized is one of the biggest reasons a business fails, um, among other things, but the, the money is always the biggest factor. So Patrick, thank you so much for being on this recording for us today. So we could learn about the brand and, uh, and of course, how young you look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And, uh, like I said, it's always a pleasure to be represented by someone like yourself. Well, thank you. Thank you. Nice working with you. Have a good day, everybody.